Well, thank you. Uh, right, I've, I've got half an hour, so uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is James Barton, I'm one of the directors at MPW, um, and today I'm, I'm doing something on critical thinking for you, and just how critical is critical thinking. Um, as with anything I ever do, it's always a lot more exciting if you actually answer back, so feel free to actually answer the questions to me. Otherwise, please grab a pen and paper and note them down yourselves, and I'll give you the answers as we go. But what is critical thinking? Critical thinking used to be a subject in the UK that everybody was taught up until about 2008. Then everyone decided it was far too difficult to teach as a subject. So we started incorporating critical thinking into the subjects that you're taught in school. Critical thinking is essentially trying to get you to question what is in front of you, to not always take things at face value. And in being good at critical thinking, it not only helps you in your studies at school, but it's also very useful for the job market. So when we look at critical thinking, the key aims of the course are to identify the elements of reasoning and logic and how you think, to evaluate that reasoning of all different kinds and try and get you to understand exactly what it is you should be focusing on, to recognize arguments and assumptions and try and actually make sure that you know why you're choosing a specific argument, to help you clarify your ideas and your expressions and your actual logical thought process in a written form, and then to be able to present that argument uh, in order to be able to persuade the listener, the audience, the reader, in order to understand what it is you're trying to say. And the subjects this works most neatly for in school are your humanities subjects. So things like English uh, literature, history, law, sociology, subjects like that that demand you have a critical level of thinking. It's not so useful for your maths and your sciences, but absolutely useful if you ever want to go off and be a lawyer, for example. And so we said it's also useful for you in the job market. And generally speaking, employers and universities are looking at the best students who can identify problems quickly and solve them efficiently. And what critical thinking is trying to do is trying to get you to explain yourself. Even if you don't know the right answer, it's about how you get to that answer. What no one wants is someone who can't provide any ideas. So when we're teaching critical thinking, that is what we're looking for. And there are four key areas really that you're assessed on. Problem solving, analysis, creativity, and performance under strain where you've got some difficulties in there, okay? Can you at least attempt to solve the problem? That's the, uh, the problem solving side of things. The analysis, can you look at the big picture? The big picture is more than what is presented in front of you. Creativity, there's this silly idea, and everyone talks about it, about thinking outside the box. But sometimes you also have to think inside the box. So there's a lot of ideas around how we can help you be creative and how we can help you think of a problem so it seems more accessible. And performance under strain, um, you'll be given time pressure in order to answer questions. How effectively can you do that? So what we're going to do this morning, or this afternoon as it is for you guys, uh, even probably the evening if, if we're not too wrong here, but what we're going to do is we're going to answer a load of questions together and just see whether you can actually do just these. Before we get to that, I want to give you a couple of examples. Question the questions. That's what we're doing in critical thinking. And so you should never believe everything that's put in front of you. Think of the media. The media will tell you exactly what it is that they want you to think. So, for example, you have a big headline. Over 20 percent of people believe that smoking should be banned. What does that tell you? Ultimately, it tells you that 20 percent of people believe that smoking should be banned. But because you put it in a big headline, what it ignores is the fact that 80 percent, the bigger number, do not believe that. But the media will sensationalize something to give a smaller number and give it greater prominence. So we have a phrase, lies, damn lies and statistics. Always question when you're given a statistic in front of you, what the statistic actually tells you. Give you another example. 20% of people, if you believe the media, believe that we should have a new government in this country. So what? 80% love our government. But sometimes statistics can be more relevant, even smaller numbers. If 10% of people believe that murdering strangers is acceptable, then obviously we have to look at that because there are the moral and ethical reasons behind that that we should consider. 
So always look at what statistics actually tell you, questioning the questions. That's one of the phases of critical thinking that we look at in schools. The other is helping you to construct an argument, to be able to actually clarify your ideas. Now, a simple argument, and arguments are rarely simple, goes like this. Killing animals is wrong, therefore we should not eat meat. And we have so many vegans and vegetarians in this world now that they subscribe to this one very, very simplistic idea that you have one simple argument that leads to a conclusion. But in school, in the university, in the job market, you never have a simple argument with a simple reason. More often than not, what we need to teach you is how to come up with more complex arguments where you have two reasons to come up with a conclusion, such as killing animals is wrong. What else? A meat based diet often can lead to heart attacks. Therefore, you should not eat meat. So we're helping you develop your idea of arguments. But then again, that's never where an argument goes. We always have to consider, because we're humans, we have brains, we are developed people, you always have to put in intermediate steps. So a civilized society will tolerate differences of opinions. So we now put in a middle step. So we should give equal respect to different faiths, and therefore we can come up with a reason conclusion at the end that we should not have a state religion because ultimately we should give equal respect even in a civilized society where we tolerate lots of different things. Now, if you layer up an argument, and that might sound a little bit complex, sorry, but if you layer up an argument, then you're now thinking critically, you're now thinking logically, and you're now thinking practically. And that is exactly what we need to get you to the stage of doing. Once you've mastered all of that, we can do the really complex thing where we can throw lots of different arguments in and eventually come up with conclusions at the end. That is critical thinking. That is what we're doing. So now we're going to warm you up because I have basically 20 minutes to test you in different ways. So I'd like you to do something for me. I'm going to say to you, I have two coins in my pocket that add up to one dollar ten cents. OK, one of them is not a ten cents piece. So, ladies and gentlemen, what are the coins? And while you figure these out, I will carry on talking to you. Why do we do brain puzzles? Why do we tease your mind in this way? We do it because it gets it to think athletically. It gets it to think beyond where it should possibly be at this moment in time. Now, I, I don't believe I can see the chat on all of this. So if anyone is merrily answering, uh, Anna, do, do you mind shouting it? Uh, uh, hang on, do I have the ability? Yes, I do. There we go, a chat function. Uh, do I have a chat that works? <laughs> James, Yelena, maybe we can do some translation here. Just... Okay, so oh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, uh, I mean this uh, this question. Да, уважаемые слушатели, такая задача. У вас у у нас в кармане есть доллары десять центов. Одна из монеток не десять центов. Какие это две монетки? Uh, um, so we've got answers. Uh, so there are different currencies. Um, okay. Uh, so somebody's like uh, ten dollars. Uh, so oh, like sorry, one dollar ten cent. Uh, so which is Look, okay. So uh, let's uh, uh, let's wait for some answers. Mm. I will, I, will, I will give the answer so we can move forward. I mean, I have two coins in my pocket that add up to one dollar ten cents. Now, usually this makes people stare at the screen for quite some time. One of them is not a 10 cents piece. So what are the coins? Ultimately, the coins are one dollar and 10 cents. The answer is straight in front of your arm, uh, in front of your eyes. But what happens is when you phrase a question in a different way, your brain immediately tries to overcomplicate it. One of them is not a cent 10 cents piece. So therefore, the other one is a 10 cents piece. OK, so two coins, there's only one way of doing the actual answer. So always when you're questioning questions, look at what the question is answering you in front. And that's quite neatly described in this next question. Tracy, and, uh, so we've got, sorry for reference, uh, uh, Alexander will pair them. Mm -hmm. So we can so say like, well done. Very good. Very good. You got the answer. Brilliant. You are critically thinking in the way we need you to think. What about this one? I mean, based upon what we just said, Question one, Tracy's mother had four children. The first was named April, the second was named May, the third was named June. What was the fourth child called? Now, the other reason for using critical thinking is because it is used still 
for Oxbridge examinations. Not quite to this level, obviously a little bit more advanced and we get into that, but you have to warm your brain up first. But the critical thinking is still a useful way of the top tier of universities differentiating between candidates. Sorry, Ileana, yes. What, so, who, uh, yeah, we've got first answer from Alexander. Alexander said that uh, Tra Tracy, so, very good. which is like, very, very Alexander, good. you are like, uh, so hating the competition. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You've already got your place at university. You've got any job you'd like to go to. Congratulations. And, uh, and there we are. I mean, it's absolutely, Tracy, the answer again is right in front of you. Don't overcomplicate a question. You only have so long to answer these questions. So the answer is going to be hidden in there somewhere. This one becomes a little bit more complex to you. So in critical thinking as well, remember what I said, we're trying to actually work out how you think, not necessarily if you always come up with the right answer, but how you get to an answer. And an answer, it's a bit like mathematics. Always in maths, you've got a right and a wrong answer, but you get more marks awarded in the English system anyway for your method, not always the answer. So in England as well, if you just give the answer and no method, you only get half of the marks. But if you give the method uh, and the answer, then obviously you get the full marks. And if you give the method and the wrong answer, then you get half the marks. So uh, the method is important. So question two, an apple costs... 40p or 40 cents, whichever way you want to do this, dollars or pence. A banana costs 60, a grapefruit costs 80. Therefore, how much would a pear cost? And to any brave person out there, how would you do this? How would, could you possibly work this out? Uh, so maybe I can translate that so Please. other people could also try. У нас есть груша, so like uh, apple, потому что да, у нас есть яблоко, apple, за 40 центов, banana банан uh, за 60 uh, grapefruit grapefruit за 80 сколько будет стоить груша a pair now do we have any volunteers on a method as to how to work this one? Oh, well, so they so they they, they give the price so who, who, what so price basing on price? like uh, so whatever intuitions are uh, um uh, Кто-нибудь, может быть, напишет метод, который, по которому, принцип, по которому мы будем определять uh, стоимость. We've got the price in the range of 20 to 100 or 20. So these are the answers that we have. Go on then. If you got one in the hundreds, who, who got one in the hundreds and how did they get it? Do, do they feel brave enough to tell them? We've got... Um... So maybe Isn't like, we don't like bananas. They, they get very short shelf life. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we don't like bananas, they have a short shelf life. Look, I, averaging, things, so the answer is averaging. Uh, three, averaging. So, yes, three, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, well look, actually, it, you can come up with lots of different answers to this. Averaging is quite a nice way of doing it. You can work out the relative value of, of what you think it should be. It's all about the method and whether you can actually persuade someone as to how you got there. The actual answer to the whole thing is 40p. And I'll tell you why it is 40p. It might not translate very well into Russian, and maybe this is uh, a difficulty to it. But you're basically charging on the syllables on the vowel, OK? So if you think about it, if you charge 20p per vowel, then you actually come up with the right price. So apple gives you 20p. Banana, three times 20 gives you 60. Grapefruit, four times 20 gives you 80, and pear gives you 40. So basically, there is a method to it. It doesn't mean you have to have got that particular method, but any method within there, as long as you can explain it, would work. So critical thinking, we're also just trying to teach you what's obvious, what's not obvious. It's, it's a little bit like becoming Sherlock Holmes or any sort of detective that you like to try and work out from your evidence where could be the hidden puzzle, okay? Now, uh, this one now starts developing your critical thinking in a different way because you're being asked to balance up some, uh, some ethical situations in here too. It's a very, very famous question and you may know it in different forms, but a farmer, so we have a farmer, he needs to cross a river and he's got a chicken, a sack of corn and a fox. His boat though only fits himself and one other thing inside the boat. The fox and the chicken, they're hungry. So if he leaves the fox with the chicken, the chicken's going to get eaten by the fox. But if he leaves the chicken with the corn, the corn will get eaten by the chicken. So how can he 
safely get across the river with all three. And just before you translate on this one, the reason we use questions like this in critical thinking is because you're being given variables within there. And it's trying to work out how you can process logically facts in front of you and come up with a solution. So shall I translate? Yes, absolutely. So, okay. Thank you okay. Um, uh, известная задача, uh, фе, ну, uh, волк, коза и uh, волк, капуста и коза, uh, но только с лесой. Uh, uh, да, ну, тут много текста, но попробуйте набрать быстро, каким образом мы решим эту задачку. Uh, so we got one answer from Mikhail. First so, chicken, second first. grain, and third fox. Is that uh, is that uh, what it was? Um, uh, uh, so uh, and another Mikhail is tr trying so different approach like farmer and grain, farmer and fox. Mm -hmm. Transfer the chicken. Oh, oh, so develop algorithm from Andre. Um, to, to, to be perfectly honest, people are getting it really, really, really well on this particular one. The idea is, and it, you, you're just overcomplicating it slightly, so never always try and take it back to its most simplistic form. So if you get it as complicated as you can, we can then take it back. So the idea would be the farmer would go across in two stages. OK. What can he leave together? He can leave together the fox and the grain. So he would transfer across either the chicken first or the fox and the grain first. He only has to do two trips in the whole thing. If you're getting him to do three trips, then there's there's a little bit, he's wasting his time. But on this one, if he gets across the chicken first, then goes back to the fox and the grain, the fox isn't going to have eaten the grain, okay? Or the other way around, he takes the fox and the grain first, then he goes back for his chicken. In all of these analogies, firstly, you have to try and just pretend you understand why a farmer's hanging around with a fox. And secondly, you have to believe that the chicken and the fox aren't going to run away. But in all of this, just two different trips. But you are absolutely getting these questions spot on now. So they're quite simple, but then they start getting progressively worse on the whole thing. This one is very famous. If you, if you might know it as the tree. If a tree falls in a forest, how do you know if it makes a noise? Well, another famous one, and this is used by Oxbridge, is how do you know if the light is on inside the fridge if you can't see it? So uh, I, I, I'll translate that. Uh, как мы узнаем, что в холодильнике uh, не горит или горит свет, когда он uh, закрыт? And again, it's all about creative thought, this one. How do you know? How could you possibly know the answer to something like that? And just while you're doing that, Valentina said in the past when it wasn't said how many times he can cross the river. That's absolutely right. If the question doesn't tell you, you're allowed to do what you like with the question. So it's a good point. Um, we can find the sensor button by which the refrigerator detects a closed door. You can, but how does that tell you about the light? Ultimately, if you can't see, how do you know if the light is on or off? Just open it, yes, but when you open it, the light will come on. So when the door is shut, how do you know if the light is on or off? Check if you're like, on the Put on a camera. Mm -hmm. Put the camera in the court. And that, it, it's, it sounds simple, but it's absolutely the case. There are different ways. Use a camera. I had that one on my lips. Use a camera. Drill a hole in the fridge door. Um, put your sensor and test it with your thumb. Or the, uh, often the best one is touch the light. If the light is warm, when you open the door, the light has been on. Oh, because maybe it's, it's not the most interesting solution. I would say, like, get inside the fridge and, and see yourself. Get inside the fridge and see yourself and then shut the door uh, in there. I mean, that would be a fascinating one if you've got a fridge big enough that you can get inside so it. So as it's like is in, is in the photo, I guess. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. So it's all in the method. It's about creative thinking. It's about lateral thinking. It's this idea of thinking outside the box. And what I said about sometimes, and your, your answer there, Eliana, absolutely, is about thinking inside the box. It's a, how can you actually be creative with the question in front of you? And I just want to uh, neatly bring it round. So once you've warmed up your brain and you've made these go from simple puzzles to prove that you should read the question, 
through to your logical process, through to your creative process, then you start looking at the bigger questions. And these are the what are called the thinking skills assessment, the TSAs that are used for the most competitive universities and also in the most competitive jobs as well. Every year, I'll give you a question here from Oxford. Every year in Britain, we have nearly 25,000 car fires, yet it is estimated that only 5% of motorists travel with an extinguisher in their car. If more motorists could be encouraged to carry fire extinguishers, then the number of car fires can be considerably reduced. And then underneath, you have five answers that you have to work out which one of those statements most accurately matches the question. Now, based on all the skills that you very quickly learned for critical thinking, Please, if you'd like to translate, please do. So, yeah, I would like to translate. Ежегодно в Великобритании происходит примерно 25 тысяч возгораний автомобилей, однако же по оценкам только 5% автомобилистов имеют огнетушитель в машине. Если бы больше автомобилистов могли иметь такой огнетушитель у себя в машине, возможно, число бы пожаров значительно бы сократилось. Ниже приведено сказано, какое из следующих утверждений лучше показывает аргументацию данную выше. So, and uh, I guess, uh, so the, the options are better sound in English, but so, yeah, because it's typical, like, uh, so, yeah, critical thinking question. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you want me to read them in English or, or will people be all right with that? Mm. Maybe D. Um, why would it be D? So it overlooks the possibility that fires might not, uh, so fires might not be put out with an extinguisher. Uh, does it overlook that fact? Does it overlook it? So what have we got? Does it ignore the fact that millions of motorists never experience a car fire? It does. Okay. Does it assume that carrying a fire extinguisher will enable fires to be put out? True. Does it imply that the occurrence of car fires is related to a lack of an extinguisher? overlook the possibility that fires might not be put out with an extinguisher or ignore the fact that there are different extinguishers for different types of fires. Arguably, with critical thinking, everything is really quite the same. And in the end, everything is a possible answer to it. You've got an A in there. Cars are burning quite hard. Yes, absolutely, they do. But what we've got is if you think back to this idea of what we said at the start with statistics, and how you layer up arguments. The answer to this question is C, because what the question actually is doing is it's trying to imply something to you, which is if you don't have an extinguisher in your car, your car is more likely to catch fire. Now, is that true in any world? No, it just means if you don't have an extinguisher in your car, you're not gonna be able to put out the car fire. But the question is trying to lead you to the assumption that if you don't have an extinguisher in your car, then you will have a car fire at some point. So again, it's all in the phrasing of the question. Maybe that doesn't translate across, but the answer definitely will come in C because the question is trying to imply something to you as opposed to tell you, okay? That makes sense. Okay. So Good. We, we, we've right. got very, very timid students, uh, so who don't, don't... Right, jolly good. So, in a nutshell, that is critical thinking. Okay, critical thinking in 25 minutes. The idea behind it is whenever you're doing critical thinking, we teach it as a not as a subject, but as a skill through any of the subjects that we do, because what you're trying to do is learn how to think properly. It is particularly relevant for those doing humanities subjects who want to go into things like law, maybe in the future. It is used in the job market and it is used at the top level of universities as well, particularly Oxbridge in that. The idea behind what we're teaching you is to always look at the information you're given and make assumptions based upon the facts in front of you. Question the questions, learn how to develop and uh, layer up a complex argument. And then once we've trained your brain, as we did with some questions, you start simple, you start by giving you some information that you just have to look through and see what the answer is. Then you develop creative thought, then you um, 
uh, develop this level of complex argument. And by the end of it, you should be able to identify the information that you're being given and make assumptions based upon your own thinking and not just uh, what the syllabus actually tells you to do. And that's it. That's critical thinking. Any questions? We've got Otherwise, one. We've got reaction from uh, Elena. So, like, uh, she 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 wants. Uh, she, she, so, I I wish I had something like that at school. Good. Um, uh, I I a long time ago now I did have something like this at school, and I wished I didn't have something like this at school because it's uh, it's good, but it plays with your brain a little bit, but it does help quite a lot. And these things are always available to do as separate uh, sessions at any point. Thank you very much, James. Pleasure. Look, have a great fair today. I hope it goes well. Uh, and I hope uh, everyone has been safe and well throughout this entire period. Be have fair. a great day and, and a nice weekend. Yeah. Thank you, James. Likewise, well Thank All you best. for a great lecture. Thank you.